Welcome to Evening Prayer on the ninth Sunday after Trinity from the parish of St. Leonard Glapthorne. Today's Old Testament reading describes an important moment in Jewish history as described by what are called the Deuteronomistic historians. These writers were working after the return from the Babylonian exile in the context of the rebuilding of Jerusalem and in particular the temple. The Deuteronomistic history was an intensely theological project, depicting the events of the preceding four centuries, with the central theological purpose of illuminating the destruction of Jerusalem and the following exile, in terms of the sovereignty of Yahweh the Lord. Today's lesson opens with reference to the book of the Acts of Solomon, a book now lost, indeed which may never have existed, as containing a fuller account of the king's reign. Solomon dies and is succeeded by his son Rehoboam, and immediately there is a crisis involving long-standing tensions in the kingdom, which had been uneasily united by Solomon's father David. Solomon had ruled from Jerusalem, the capital of Judah, but had imposed heavy obligations on the northern tribes. Now he was dead, the north wanted a better deal. The northern tribes found a champion in Jeroboam, who had returned from Egypt, where he'd fled after an unsuccessful rebellion. Instead of compromise, Rehoboam ignores the advice of Solomon's old counsellors and, egged on by young hotheads, gets even tougher with the north. As a result, the north rebels. Rehoboam flees to Jerusalem, and Jeroboam is proclaimed king of the north. The kingdom is again divided between southern Judah and northern Israel. The New Testament lesson is from Acts, which continues the account of Paul's first missionary journey with Barnabas. They have reached Lystra in Anatolia, now part of modern Turkey. This is the first time that they are among people who are entirely Gentile. Any account of Jesus in terms of continuity with Judaism and the fulfilment of Hebrew scripture would be pointless. The people of Lystra interpret a healing miracle as an indication that Barnabas and Paul are, respectively, the gods Zeus and Hermes. Interestingly, they thought that though Paul was the chief speaker, Barnabas was preeminent. Things get out of hand when the local priest of Zeus arranges an elaborate ritual sacrifice to them. Paul and Barnabas counter this with the conventional Jewish critique of Gentile idolatry. They are mere human beings with the message that people should turn from worthless idols to the living God who created all things and continually provides for material and spiritual needs. However, some Jews arrive and turn the crowds against them. Paul is stoned and left for dead, but he's somehow saved by other disciples and he and Barnabas get away. Evening Prayer I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, Yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice, unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. 
we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus you are Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from the first book of Kings, chapter 11, verse 41, to chapter 12, verse 20. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, all that he did, as well as his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the acts of Solomon? The time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. Solomon slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of his father David, and his son Rehoboam succeeded him. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nabat, heard of it, for he was still in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon, then Jeroboam returned from Egypt. And they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and said to Rehoboam, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke that he placed on us, and we will serve you. He said to them, Go away for three days, then come again to me. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam took counsel with the older men who had attended his father Solomon while he was still alive, saying, How do you advise me to answer this people? They answered him, If you will be a servant to this people today and serve them, and speak good words to them when you answer them, then they will be your servants forever. But he disregarded the advice that the older men gave him, and consulted the young men, who had grown up with him, and now attended him. He said to them, What do you advise that we answer this people who have said to me, Lighten the yoke that your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him said to him, Thus you should say to this people who spoke to you, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you must lighten it for us. Thus you should say to them, my little finger is thicker than my father's loins. Now, whereas my father laid on you a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day, as the king had said, Come to me again on the third day. The king answered the people harshly. He disregarded the advice that the old men had given him and spoke to them according to the advice of the young men. My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, because it was a turn of affairs brought about by the Lord, that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord had spoken by Elijah, the Shilonite, to Jeroboam, son of Nabat. When all Israel saw that the king would not listen to them, the people answered the king, What share do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Look now to your own house, O David. So Israel went away to their tents. 
but Rehoboam reigned over the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah. When King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was taskmaster over the forced labor, all Israel stoned him to death. King Rehoboam then hurriedly mounted his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. When all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called him to the assembly and made him king over all Israel. There was no one who followed the house of David, except the tribe of Judah alone. Here ended the Old Testament lesson. Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The New Testament lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, verses 8 to 20. In Lystra there was a man sitting who couldn't use his feet, and had never walked, for he had been crippled from birth. He listened to Paul as he was speaking, and Paul, looking at him intently, and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet! And the man sprang up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates. He and the crowds wanted to offer sacrifice. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We are mortals, just like you, and we bring you good news, that you should turn from these worthless things to, to the living God, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that's in them. In past generations he allowed all the nations to follow their own ways, yet he has not left himself without witness in doing good giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they scarcely restrain the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. But Jews came there from Antioch and from Myconium, and won over the crowds. Then they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples surrounded him, he got up and went into the city. The next day, He went on with Barnabas to Derbe. Here ended the New Testament lesson. The Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Collect of the Day Grant to us, Lord, we beseech thee, the spirit to think and do always such things as be rightful, that we, who cannot do anything that is good without thee, may by thee be enabled to live according to thy will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Peace O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and all set up by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. The Collect for Aid Against All Perils Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And now time of private prayer, during which we can bring before God anything that we're worried about, those things for which we should be grateful. Anyone known to us who especially needs our prayers, and not forgetting to pray for ourselves. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>